Uh, we read from Proverbs chapter 18, uh, from verse 20 to 21, which says, From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay, uh, Proverbs 18, verse 20 to 21. Proverbs 18, 20 It says, From the fruit of a man's mouth, his mouth is. Uh, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He's satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. We were talking about the power of your words. Your words are powerful. More powerful than we we know we realize actually uh, just think about it if you don't speak words uh, of confession of repentance uh, you will not go to heaven that's very serious from the words that come out of your mouth you can go to heaven or you can go to hell so now if the same weight can determine your eternal destiny then you must be very mindful of the words that you speak because they are so so powerful so that's something that we need to really really understand uh, it's very important for us to understand that words are bridges many times when i have been, uh, as i was teaching you about forgiveness I said forgiveness is your bridge to the other side. Forgiveness is that bridge that you have to go through to get to the promised land. Uh, the land of peace. Uh, for you to cross to that land, you need to speak words of forgiveness. That is why forgiveness is not wished, it's not only wished in your heart. No, it's not something that you wish. It is something that you speak. Amen. Amen. So your mouth must speak forgiveness for it to stick. Otherwise, your forgiveness is not valid. So words are very important bridges that can connect us to God as we repent. And connect us to each other as we are able to make peace with each other. The words are very, very powerful. Amen. And we know that words do not exist just from the throat. Words come from the heart. Amen. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. 
We also learned about the how much our weights are worth. It is clear from the Bible that God writes every word that I speak. And by our weights we will be judged. So our weights are very, very critical. Amen. Weights are very, very important. And so we must watch our weights. When it comes to our spouses, you can build your spouse or you can break your spouse. Um, I'm not very sure uh, whether when I met my wife, whether she knew that she will uh, be a speaker. Uh, who will speak at conferences and you know all kinds of things but i saw it and i started working hard to encourage her to be there i kept on telling her that she can do it i kept on forcing her to do it you hear me <laughs> <laughs> I kept on pushing her in front to do it. She was reluctant, but I kept on pushing her. Uh, and now she's doing it. Uh, people, other people have also discovered the gift that she has. Amen. And because as her spouse, I kept on speaking words to say, you know, this is how good you are. This is what you can do. You are powerful. You are actually more powerful than me. <laughs> you teach better than me. You know, and other people started noticing it and telling her. And so, through all of whatever negativity that the enemy may have tried to throw at her she emerged out of it and i continue to do it maybe it's your husband he is good in some things but he's not so good in others but you are always focusing on the bad side hey, you are a useless man what other men are doing you are comparing him with other men oh, never compare your, your husband with other men in a negative way. you kill them and so they have to stand and defend themselves so we need to build each other uh, keep on encouraging each other and uh, you know when you build the other person and you are very intentional you don't have time to see their bad side amen the devil can use you if you are not careful he can use you to destroy somebody you love you see words of somebody who is very dear to you are heavier than other words to your spouse you are not a useless person you have weight and how you are you are going to do when you talk you talk with that weight i get it. one of the reasons why divorce is so devastating to those who go through it is because when they are bitter they use everything that they know of the weakness of the other as a weapon of mass destruction from their mouth everyone uses what they know about the other to destroy them to make them feel like nothing divorce is manufactured manufactured in hell 
thalano e dirwa go diheleng and uh, it has weights mena le mahoko that will destroy no matter how strong you are it is designed to destroy you and to you know make sure that your future is gone but there is grace and because of grace we are rebuilt by god so what are the 10 deadly sins of the time that's why we stopped last time uh, can we read from Isaiah 59 verse 1? Isaiah 59 verse 1. Isaiah 59 The 10 deadly sins of the tongue. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Uh, you see, our God is able to do more than um, we can imagine. Or even think of. His hand is not short. Sometimes we think his hand is short. But many a times. Our sins can hide the face of God from us. Which becomes very difficult for us to hear him. There is nothing wrong with God's hand. Neither is there anything wrong with his ears. He's able to hear. He's able to answer. Sometimes what is wrong is our mouth. The words that come out of your mouth when you speak. You know, no. I don't even have a future. You are saying that to your friend while we are chatting outside waiting for the service. And then you get into oh the service. Oh God, you are able. You are able. You can change my situation. <laughs> Do you see what your mouth has just done? You are just speaking things out there. As if God is not out there. Now that you are here. Because you are used of, <laughs> of gossiping. You can say something very and negative. Then and then when you see them, you tell them how important they are. Now God hears both sides, this side and this side. So there's nothing wrong with his hand. He can he can save. There's nothing wrong with his ear. He can hear. And it's because he can hear that sometimes your prayers are not answered. You say things that negate what you say when you are in church. Amen. This is very, very critical for us. Now, the first uh, deadly sin of the tongue. I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. The first one is lying. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Lying. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Lying. 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 Proverbs 6.16 says 6.16 Let's start at 16 This 16 the Lord hates Yes, 7 are an abomination to him mm -hmm. A proud look A lying tongue Hands that shed innocent blood. The Lord hates a lying tongue. Does the Lord love the owner of the tongue? Yes. He loves the owner of the tongue. Does God love sinners? Yes. God loves sinners. But he hates sin. Amen. So lying is a very, very terrible thing. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. 
They are in 1222. 1222. It says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Say to somebody next to you, abomination. <laughs> So when you lie, that is an abomination to the Lord. Abomination. Hallelujah. Lying is an abomination. I know that in our culture, we like lying in the form of exaggeration. <laughs> You make yourself look like Mungwato when we have an English figure. Huh? It was packed. Huh? <laughs> the are so many people from everywhere. We like exaggerating to try and make our point look stronger or to make ourselves look more important. So the Bible says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. You may have grown up uh, from a family that you know likes to add salt and pepper. <laughs> and to you is just natural. Huh? Now that you are a Christian, realize that that is an abomination before the Lord. And train yourself to speak the truth. Amen. You know that there are some people who like to be relevant in everything. Eh? When you talk about that topic, they also have something to say about it. When we change to another topic, oh, they also have something to say about it. They are never left out. They don't want to be left out. There is nothing they don't know. You know those people, eh? <laughs> they always try to show you that they are with you by always adding to your story. It can become a habit that somebody is no longer aware of it. Actually, you can be such a good liar that you believe your own lies. Really? Remember, faith comes by hearing. So when you hear yourself lying a lot, you end up believing it. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. There are some people who are so good at lying that they believe their own lies. The brain just does something that ends up uh, believing. But the Lord says lying is an abomination to the Lord. But God delights in those who deal truthfully. <clears throat> Why? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. When you speak the truth, you are like him. You are a child of truth. Amen. But, on the other hand, lying, the father of all lies is the devil. So every time you lie, you are speaking the devil's language. You are like the devil. Not like God. Amen. 
Actually, Jesus once challenged the Jews and he said, You are just like your father, for he is the devil. He has lied from the beginning. He's the father of lies. When you speak lies, you are speaking the devil's language. The question is, who are you like? Amen. It's okay not to know in, uh, uh, about a particular subject. It's okay. You don't ha always have to be, you know, how to get on now with this one in the know it's okay not to know it's okay to be taught you know you miss a lot of uh, great opportunities to be taught if you are always claiming to know it's okay to be taught you know you miss a lot of great opportunities to be taught if you are always claiming to know but if you admit that you do not know you can learn something that you don't know okay the second one is sowing discord uh, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 12. So in discord. It says a worthless person, a wicked man walks with a perverse mouth. Uh, verse 13. He winks with his eye, eyes, he shuffles his feet, he points with his fingers. A worthless person walks with a perverse mouth. They, you see, people who saw discord is people whose worth is not there and they hope that by sowing discord their worth will go up but they don't realize that they are busy writing a book about themselves people get to know who they truly are you become worthless Titus uh, chapter 3 verse 9 to 11. It says, avoid worthless disputes. But avoid foolish disputes. Genealogies. Genealogies. Contentions and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and useless. Paul here was talking to Titus, who was his spiritual son. Because there were people who were sowing discord within the Christians. And they were finding any opportunity <coughs> to use anything that they could uh, they could to sow discord. For example, things like genealogies. Like whose child are you? Are you from the line of David? Or which lineage? Amen. There were arguments, contentions, strivings about the law. Is the law still applying to them? Does it not apply? You know, sometimes we can measure in minus. Paul says for they are unprofitable and useless. You'll find Christians arguing about something that is totally unprofitable, something that is useless to their faith. But they end up saying things that hurt each other. And they so discord. Sometimes it's what you say to another child of God about what the other one said. You know that Sarah doesn't love you. Why are you saying that? You never see the way she looks at you. 
You should pay attention to her. How does she look yeah, at you? Really? Let's say are, 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 are Let's say hi her. to her. You'll see how she looks at you. Your mind comes to Sakamizi expecting a certain look. In church, you have to be careful. Ne? It's not everyone who is loud during prayer, who dances more a lot, who has a good spirit. I want you to know that. Actually, most sinners are in church. They attend church regularly and they are members. <laughs> Especially sinners of this type. They are here. They are part of us. <clears throat> they are always looking. For, you know, I think there is this thing about us, Batswana. Batswana. <laughs> Like <laughs> then the career of whatever news. Huh? When you have important news, eh? How long hey, the talk? Talk? Who, who, who have, you you heard? have you heard? Huh? And because you know, having breaking news make people come quickly, quickly, rubble. So that you sometimes you don't have you don't have you don't have your breaking news is not that, you know, powerful. So you add so that it you no, make it powerful. You must watch that temptation. And not so discord. We have to be very careful. Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. God speaking from heaven, he says, I love it when you are united. Jesus praying for us, he says, I pray that they will be one even as you and I are one. When you saw discord, you are working for the devil. I want you to understand that. Whatever issue you have with another child of God or with another person, it's between you and them. You must solve it. Do not campaign for others to be on your side and hate that person. No. Remember, just because you don't like somebody, it doesn't mean God is on your side. You know, some of us, we think we have a special thing with God. God, this one we are not going to like. Okay, God? This one is okay, God. We are liking this one. This one we don't like, God. Uh, uh. No, 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 no. If you find that you are always having problems with people, everywhere you are going, and somehow you feel like you are always the right one and they are all wrong, you must, you must sit down and introspect. Can do why? Am I the problem? And most of the time it's because you are the problem. Amen. So if you saw this card, you are working against God. Number three. Gossip. A gossiper is somebody who habitually spreads intimate or private rumors or facts. Proverbs 20 verse, 20, verse 19. Verse 19. Why, why do people gossip? Is it also that thing of breaking news? The importance of having something special? Sometimes if you know somebody who likes to gossip, ne? what fits 
a gossiper is the attention they get. So when you give a gossiper attention, you are feeding yeah, them exactly what they are looking for. Let me tell you. Hey, Have you heard? I'm sorry. The moment you. you hear them say that, say, I don't want to hear. Hmm? Oh, what is the <laughs> You deflate it. They know what I'm talking about. But you are feeding gossipers by always giving them the attention. They thrive in attention. So, Proverbs 20, verse 19 says, He who goes about as a tail bearer reveals secrets. Now listen to what the Bible says. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. When you like gossip, yourself, you are equally guilty. Umulato. I read the reddit of the we normally say that your ears have put you in trouble. Yeah, sometimes you need to, all the time, you must protect your ears. If you are friends with your gossiper, you are a gossiper. Huh? You are enjoying it again. Psalms 1 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. No sit in the seat of mockers. You are blessed when you don't associate with such characters. You are blessed. What is the opposite? What is the opposite? You are not blessed when you hang out with mockers, with gossipers. Remember, the hand of the Lord is not short. Neither is his ears blocked. What is the problem? You. Who you associate with, what you say. You may, be, you may not be spreading the gossip, but you are enjoying it. Ask yourself, but why do I enjoy gossip? What is it in me that craves gossip? Why do I want to What's in me that wants to know yeah, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm an intercessor. The next thing we talk about prophet. Will be a prophet. Are a prophet. Gossip. Yeah, you do it. You see people who like to gossip. You see people who like to gossip. You see people who You might as well exit. Hmm? Have you heard? We don't want to hear. But it takes discipline for you to do that. Agar. So a gossip tells secrets. Don't hang around with someone who talks too much. Proverbs 16 verse 28. It reveals that a gossip separates close friends. Did you say this person is your friend? Hey, you can do the you think you have a friend and yet you have a snake. Somebody comes in, they want to replace you. They are jealous because they see that, hey, these guys are very close and they don't like it. So they come up with stories to separate friends. 1628 says, a perverse man so strive. And a whisperer separates the best of friends. Let's read it again. Who separates people? You have made yourself a mini devil. You are separating people. You are a little devil. What are you using? Your mouth. Remember? Out of the lips, out of your lips, your stomach will be satisfied. You will reap what you have. So, 
What is it in you that wants to separate close friends? What is it? Is it jealousy? Is it insecurity? Is it lack of um, identity? Oh, you don't like to see people happy. You are a Christian, but you have these things inside of you. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. When we were still at SU, there was a book of the heart. It will show a heart with uh, snakes inside. With, uh, it had a heart. I want to It was snakes and scorpions. And then after you give your life to Christ, it's a white heart. <laughs> Amen. You say you are a Christian, <laughs> but your heart is full of snakes, frogs, and scorpions. <laughs> what are snakes doing in a Christian's heart? Second Corinthians 12 20. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find I shall not find you such as I wish. And then I shall be found by you such as you do not wish. Lest there be contentions. Jealousies. Outbursts. Of wrath. Selfish ambitions. Backbitings, whisperings, conceits, tumult, even like it is over by me, it was a good little could you have you see that in the ch Corinthians church. Let's do, uh, verse 22. 21. Okay, let's when I come again, my my God will humble me among you and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, the fornication, lewdness which they have practiced. Now go back to verse 20. You see these words, ne? All of these words. Contentions. Jealousies. Outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions. Backbitings. Whisperings. Low and all the other words. Asupai. What do they say? They symbolize the snakes and All the scorpions in the Christian's heart. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Those are very serious things that reveal your heart. And God hates them. Number four, slander. It's a false and malicious statement which is told about someone. Uh, Psalm 140, verse 11. And then Proverbs 10, 18. First Corinthians 5.11. Let's start with Psalms. 140 verse 11. Oh, no, go to a loud confused noise, especially one caused by a large mass of people. <laughs> and this thing, you see, can cause a lot of people to go wild, crazy. And cause riots. If you look at the riots that are in South Africa and try and find the root cause of what really caused them, you realize that, you know, <clears throat> things just went out of control because of wrong information. 
how can level la khudu ya go ka South Africa ka ta le mokha gore do tsetse ndi le mo taolong ka le ba ka la kitswe so be very careful what you say when you whisper to your friend I la thoko gore o bua eng ha o sebetsa tsala ya can divide the church so khona go kgaoganya ke reke right a church can literally split and people go because of what you say which should not be true and then people buy and then they buy the same and keep on getting their own before you know it the church of god has been split because of you we have to be very very careful about this thing okay, psalm 140 verse 11 let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Hmm? And then it says, let evil let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. A slanderer is a very dangerous person. And God says they should not be established on earth. In other words, their lives should be cut short. You who say slanderous things about <laughs> others should not live on earth. Because your words are so you should reap what you have sown. So you should, so you should not be established. These are very serious things that just come out of your mouth. Say untrue things to destroy another person. Okay, Proverbs 10 18. It says, Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whosoever spreads slander is a fool. The first one, whoever hides hatred. As lying lips. You know how much you hate another. You keep smiling and telling them how much you miss them. It will kill while it is laughing. <laughs> you hate somebody inside, but you are showing them a smile. That's where you become a witch. Anyway, our main one is the second one. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. This is the word of God. You are not wise when you go around saying bad things about other people. You are not wise. There may be some truth to it, but it's none of your business. What are you going to achieve by saying the things that you are saying? 1 Corinthians 5.11 <coughs> This one is even more <coughs> strict. Yeah. First Corinthians 5 11 says, But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, who is covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Paul was very strict when he was talking to the Corinthians. People who live sinful lives. Don't eat with them. He's not talking about the when he continues this, I'm not talking about those who are in the world. But those who claim to be brothers, but they are living sinful lives like this. Don't eat with them. Don't associate with them. Hmm? But you are enjoying their company. Let's go to Nando. Let's go to Nando. Let's go to Nando. You, you even get to 
Proverbs 11.13. Proverbs 11.13. You see, uh, people must be able to confide in us. Our deepest, uh, you know, their deepest and darkest secrets as Christians. Without the fear that their things will come out. You see, I deal with people's secrets in my office there every day. If I had no self-control, Every week I'll come packed to the pulpit with the stories of people. <laughs> <laughs> but when I leave my office, I forget about their stories. I forget about them. That's why I'll remember them again when they come next time. I don't have to go around spreading people's things. How will people trust me with their things if I do that? When you are told a secret, when you are told something deep, when you are confessed to, you have the responsibility to keep that to yourself. Because you want to be. <laughs> We like breaking news. Yeah, you know what happened today The things I heard. People do stuff. Oh, who really? sister. Sister Oli. You see that sister? The KG, the real KG. Who really? And then chaba 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 And then you start talking. You have to mouse cover low. Don't tell anyone. Hey, who did it? KG. Miss cover low. Please don't tell anyone. They also trust that one trust another one. Before you know it, the whole church. Everyone has <laughs> the knows the secret. Huh? It requires self-control to know people's things and to keep them. And people will trust you with everything. And you'll be able to help many people. When you are confessed to, you have the responsibility to keep it to yourself. You must ask yourself, is a secret safe with me? Because secrets, secrets have power, you know. Do you know how to use that power? Can you keep that power under control? When you are Which can move at 300 kilometers per hour. Are you able to control it, uh, that power, and just drive within the speed limit? Can I how can power I have Or the moment you see power, it drives you crazy. Self-control, self-control. Okay. Character. Said. Is having power and using it correctly. A man of character who has a character has this power. They know a lot of things. But they are able to keep themselves under control. They know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. The other thing that uh, the Lord hates, which is a sin of the lips, is cursing. Mm -hmm. The Christians who swear. What do you say? That's what I said. A Christian insulting you. <laughs> and they find nothing wrong with Are you. Are you insulting me? Yes, I am. Heaven. Romans chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. But Romans 3, 13, Romans 14. Romans 3. 
You must understand that insulting words or curse words they curse people. Yeah, very, very powerful words. Okay? It says their throat is an open tomb. Yeah, <laughs> your throat being buried. <laughs> it means people are buried in there. Hmm? <laughs> this is very serious. <laughs> With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. <laughs> the poison of asps is under their lips. What comes out of your throat? Is it a a tomb for people where you bury them with your own weights. You, you bury them there. Hmm? Psalm 109 verse 17. As he loved cursing, let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. Whatever a man sows, you have cursing you hate blessings you hate blessing other people you will not be blessed number seven blasphemy exodus uh, 20 verse 7 it's very important for us not to take the lord's name in vain I don't know whether it's in our culture or what. We like saying Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Everywhere you just throw in Jesus. My God, my God. You know, you know, on DSTV you can you can uh, beep kiss words, I get even in christian movies when they say jesus it goes peep <laughs> now jesus has become a so weird why because when people are cursing they use jesus the name of the lord it's sad isn't it so we should not take the name of the lord in vain exodus 27 says Exodus 27, verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For, the okay. for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Be careful that you stop that habit. I know some of you do it innocently. But you have to decide. You have to reprogram your mind to stop doing it. I've been teaching my children also to stop using the name of the Lord in vain. And the other day, uh, Mandy was saying, Jesus. And she was reacting to something. And Annalisa said, don't use the name of the Lord in vain. <laughs> and Manisha was saying, what? Says, don't just Bara, call the name of the Lord for nothing. <laughs> Annalisa. <laughs> okay? The other uh, part of blasphemy is when you say the Lord said, when he did not say it. You heard some gossip now you are, your gossip is coming as prophecy to other people. You know that Christians are like that. Hey, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. And then the Lord says, after having heard from someone else. And you know, you can make people very bitter when you do that. <clears throat> when they realize that they had told somebody they are things and that person is your friend and now you are coming as if it's prophecy, they realize they can't trust. Some of these gossip prophecies will put you in trouble. You'll be struck by lightning. 
He has heard the Lord say it when it is actually gossip. Don't play with the name of the Lord like that. Number eight, filthy speech. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. We have to be careful what we say. Uh, filthy speech is saying things that are dirty. Things that are not expected from a child of God. Cross jokes. Mm. <clears throat> it says, but now you yourselves are to put off all these. Yeah. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. language. There is a standard that God expects of his children. So that you don't say rotten. Filthy language. Amen. We have to be very careful what we say. Uh, because God is recording all of the ways that he did. Filthy jokes tear up last. At your workplace. You know, just during break, they gather and all they talk about is sleeping. <laughs> And you are there as a Christian. Oh, oh, you are enjoying what they are saying. Oh, 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 oh. After the weekend, they tell the stories of how they were sleeping. You think because you are a Christian, this thing as you are hearing it more and more, it's, it's becoming your brain is conditioning itself to it. Oh, it's okay to sleep. Yeah, no, how to Mm. The next thing, one of the colleagues keeps on flirting with you. When you are at your weakest point, the devil brings them. When you are far away, good trip in Kasane. And then because we have been flirting, flirting, the, everything has been prepared for the final fall. You have been, you have been talking filthy. Preparing your mind for the final act. And then you are caught in it. And then you struggle to come out because you've opened a door that should not have been opened. Be very careful of those people who use language that they should not use when they are speaking to you. It may be on text, WhatsApp, Facebook, Facebook. They are throwing in ideas. Because these things they don't come. You don't suddenly find yourself in bed with somebody. It doesn't happen like that. It starts with words. Instead of rebuking somebody, you are smiling. As you keep smiling, you are receptive according uh -huh. to them. And next thing they're asking you, how is it like to just stay? <laughs> you mean you never desire. <laughs> and then, the next thing you are where you should not be. Number nine, contain, contain, contentious speech. Proverbs 21 verse 9 and 26 verse 21. 21 verse 9. Contentiousness is arguing or provoking argument. There are Christians who like arguing about everything. Arguing. Whenever people are arguing, Political rally. Hey, man, I go and during this time for political rallies, people argue a lot. 
Yeah, cause school is right. Cause school no siyam. No, sisi boy again. Sisi boy again, I'm tired. Manga, nga. Arguing. Huh? We have to be very careful about arguments. Contentions. Provoking arguments. For Christians, we must know that contentions, when we are like that, when we are always arguing about things, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Hmm? You see, things like politics, sports, all of that, we must participate, yes, as Christians. But not at the expense of our Christianity. Not at the expense of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Politically, sports-wise, we will always disagree. And it's okay. It's healthy to talk about, you know, uh, argue about some things, about belief systems. But make sure that you are guiding your heart throughout, that it doesn't become evil in your heart. Love your brother who is in the opposition. Love your brother who is in the uh, ruling party. Sometimes you need to agree to disagree. You know that we can agree on this one. Mm. But with a good spirit. Uh, politics is good. It's good for us in a <coughs> democratic, uh, you know. Uh, it's good that we engage but we should never forget that we are Christians and we must speak in a way that builds one another Amen <coughs> um, Proverbs 26 says a charcoal is to burning coals as charcoal is to burning coals I think that's what he's saying. And wood to fire. So is a contagious man to kindle strife. Yeah. You see, those two charcoal makes coals burn more. And wood makes the fire burn more. A contagious man also makes strive to burn more. Are you hearing it? So be very careful as a child of God. Ephesians 4.30 Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 29. Ephesians 4.29. It says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Okay? But what is good for necessary edification? That it may impart grace to the hearers. And then the verse that then says we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. So when we fail uh, to you know speak words that built we are grieving the Holy Spirit. We should not let any corrupt word proceed from our mouth. You must always ask yourself, is it, is it going to edify? Will it impart grace on others to the hearing? Number 10, unbelief. If you have a heart of unbelief, you will tear people down. Because negativity is a language of unbelief. 
Negativity is the devil's language but spoken by those who have the devil's perspective. Negativity is the devil's language. So be very careful what your unbelief will bring out of your mouth. Why nothing is working out. Mm -mm. Be very, very careful. And sometimes be very careful of what the doctors have said. I've heard horrible things that are said by doctors, by professionals, saying to other people. And sometimes without clear evidence, with assumptions. It's almost like sometimes doctors they 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 tell you the worst case scenario of what they are possibly, you know, uh, suspecting. They just, you come out of the doctor's office and all you see is death. Because of how far they go usually. So you have to be very, very careful. What you believe? You know, whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Now, we need to understand that faith is not denying the truth or the facts. But it is stating the fact. For example, when the spies went into the promised land, they said yes they are giants there that is stating the fact they were giants there they were not saying no there are no giants they were, there are no giants they were just going no they were giants there that is stating the truth yes I have cancer that is the fact but they said but we are well able to take it although there are giants there but our God is able to work through us so that we take the giants out very very important for us to have the right perspective we are not in denial but we confess faith in God we confess the ability of God amen amen uh, let me give you an example when somebody that you love dies sometimes as Christians we rush to say ah they are in heaven they are in a better place that's true I mean, Christians are in a better place. but that does not mean you should not grieve for them don't be in denial of your pain grief for some but Christopher Moba can love to Holy, Oscalila, Oscalila, come to Sunday, no cry, 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 you must go through the process of grieving for them. Actually, grieving is a blessing of God. Crying is a blessing for God. When you cry, there's pressure that comes out of you. But when you are in denial and you say, I'm okay, I'm okay, you are building pressure up and it's going to explode at the wrong time. So, you are going to cry out of God and satisfy yourself. After you have cried, then you will start the healing process. There will be nothing left behind. Don't be denial, in denial of the facts. You are going to miss this person. Oscar, Oscar, and to Let them cry. Oscar, 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 because they contained the emotions and when the pressure bursts the demons take advantage Amen God wants to bless his children for faith 
when you believe God will bless you you put yourself in line with the blessings of the Lord we need to tame our tongues make sure that we say the right things don't just speak, speak, speak. Hmm? you are responsible you have to put on the brittle like you should control yourself now practical ways of controlling your tongue number one how do you control your tongue number one learn to pause wait one second two seconds three seconds and ask yourself before you speak are these words of life or words of death ask yourself you see when you read the book uh, proverbs it talks about morals about money your mouth these are three areas that uh, we need help most in morals money the mouth proverbs 21 verse 23 proverbs 21 23 see guarding your mouth guards your soul because as a man so is he so your ways are very critical in shaping whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles you want to keep your soul from troubles be careful what you say to your soul because your soul will be programmed according to the words that you speak proverbs 10 19 watch how many words you speak in the multitude of words sin is not lacking be careful of your balabaling the bible says in the multitude of words i grew up on what i want to but what Sing people who want to they always know everything about Sin everything. abounds there. Can I be near the They leave it. They go issue. Anyway. But the but he who restrains his lips is wise in the multitude of words sin abounds be careful you who like talking too much there's nothing wrong with talking too much by the way pastors talk a lot teachers talk a lot women talk a lot but be careful what you say when you are talking you must guard your mouth and therefore guard your soul proverbs 17 27 to 28 a fool who doesn't talk much is wise <laughs> a fool who doesn't talk much is wise it reminds me of a story that is uh, talked about at a mental hospital at the, apparently they put the people in the in a room and then they switched off the lights and then they switched on the torch and then says whoever can climb this light we can release I can the light comes out like that 
you know that the light yeah, rail is a rail, and then they tried to go over the light rail. Yeah, the other one was standing there watching while he was laughing at the light rail. The other one was standing there watching while he was laughing at the light rail. So these guys think, ah, that one understands that you can't uh, climb over this uh, beam. They ask why do they want to climb over the beam? Why do they want to climb over the beam? They ask why do they want to climb over the beam? He says, I know. Ah, how is he? What do you know? He likes to know your power to only team and make you a So a fool who doesn't say much looks wise. Yeah, no. He was there and he said he got it. Because he was not saying anything, he was not doing anything. So he looked wise from a distance. Until he spoke, then they realized, ah, foolishness multiplied. So I'm going to run the hell out of 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 the hell out and then they would think you understand the bible knows these things bible is idiot it says a fool who doesn't talk much is wise if you have difficulty saying the right thing try talking less mm reduce the number of your words until God helps you and teaches you how to talk remember there is nothing wrong with being a talkative person just know how to talk when to talk and receive from the spirit what to say Proverbs 18 verse 10 says Proverbs 18 10 This is, huh? No, 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 no. This is not the one. Okay, let's go to James one nineteen. Jacob one nineteen. James one nineteen. Jacob one nineteen. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Among the mungu ane bona kuhure itagir. Uh huh. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. Talking too much is not a sign of. The Bible says, "Be slow to." Bible says, "Be slow to speak." Be slow to speak. 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 Now, good talkers are first good listeners. Have you ever seen they interrupt? Huh? That is not good. You must respect other people, give them a chance to speak. For you to be a good talker, you must be a good listener. Hey, guys, make us hear this. Try to tell some of the story. They say, "I know. Let me finish it off for you." Okay, and you can train yourself to do this. Okay, the second thing that you must do is to ponder. Is to pause. Second thing is to ponder. Just think. Strive to be someone who thinks before they talk. Not while you are talking. Can I ask you to be able to support? And now you have to find ways of controlling this. Before you know it, you are saying stories and people are looking at you like, "Are you crazy?" How can you want to protect yourself? You will continue talking and talking, making more and more mistakes. So ponder. Don't talk. Don't think while you are talking. Your mind and your heart, your subconscious, they think. 
Give them a chance to do that. Okay, uh, just project the verses there. Proverbs 23, 7, Luke 2, 19, Luke 2, 35, Luke 9, 40. All of those. And then you can write them down. Our time is up. Let your heart tell your mind. Tell your mouth what to say. Okay, the last part is to pray. The third part. Isaiah 6 1. Isaiah 6 verse 1. You see, when Isaiah first saw the Lord, he was first convicted about his own mouth. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And God had to stretch out his hand and touch the lips of Isaiah. And his iniquity was taken away. His lips were cleaned. Before he could be sent. It's very important for us to allow God to direct us what to say. So that we can speak life and not death. We must let this be part of our quiet time, that time when we are with the Lord. Touch your lips and to cleanse you. Focusing on God and what he will want you to say for the day. Remember, words are bridges. Words can take you from death to life. Words can build or destroy other people. Watch your words. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your amazing grace. You are the great I am. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Today, you have spoken to us about the fruit of our lips, O oh God, the words that we speak. We ask, O oh God, that this teaching will help us to be careful about what we say, O oh God, uh, to be filled with your word so that out of the abundance of our hearts, hearts that are filled with your word, our mouth will speak, will speak life, will build other people, Father, in Jesus' name. Great I am, King of kings, Lord of lords, mighty Savior, we thank you. We bless your name. We lift you up high. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever think of, imagine, or even ask for. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your love. Thank you, Father. Bless your children. Protect them as they go home from here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.